Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Eco-activists have become a regular irritant on UK roads, sitting in front of traffic, sometimes gluing themselves to the tarmac. I sympathise with their cause, but not the way they're going about it. I think it's dangerous and just winds people up rather than bring them to their cause and side. But one such person who did take them on was Sharon and Speed, who'd just been banned from driving after she nudged three insolent Britain activists with her car when they blocked her on the school run. Here's what happened. My son needs to get to school. Push her up. Move out of the way now. She's going to punch her up. Punch her up. I can't get out. My son is 11 and he needs to get to school. My son is 11. He needs to get to school. I need to get to work. So move out of the way then. Move out of the way. And let me get my son to school. Well, Sharon Speed joins me now, along with Liam Norton from Insulate Britain. Good evening to both of you. Sharon, um, when I watch that video, I just Hi. see I see a mum desperate to get her kid to school on time. I've got a 10-year-old who I take to school, but I walk her to yeah. school. You have to drive your son. You now can't do that. When you look back at what happened there, no, describe I... your frame of mind about what you encountered and the way you reacted. Do you know what? It was a really hard time personally for me. Um, I know more people are aware of my, a bit of my background now. I just found it really stressful. You know, it's early in the morning. I'm trying to get my son to school, get to work. I've got personal things going on as well. I'm suffering with anxiety. And I've got these people in front of me stopping me from going to where I needed to go. I just found it really difficult, a difficult, it's really hard experience for me. And when you then got dragged through the courts, you were banned from driving for a year, received a £240 fine, you were charged with assault, although that got dropped. Mm -hmm. Did, I mean, could you really believe that yeah. you were suddenly being made to look like the villain in this story? I mean, I've been to court three times for this. Um, I'm still shocked that I'm on a driving ban, I'll be honest. I don't really think that I deserve that. I mean, they did say it was going to be careless driving, which meant I got points on my licence and a fine, and I was happy, you know, to accept that. I understand that I did do wrong, you know, and I take the consequences, but for someone who has no previous convictions and, you know, not even points on my licence, I just felt like that was a bit harsh. And as a result, you now can't drive for a year. You can't take your son to football training. He trains all over London and Essex. You can't help your mother with her shopping and getting around. Uh -huh. um, it seems to me yeah. that you've ended up being pretty harshly punished here when, in fact, you were being prevented just from going about your normal day. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's bring in Liam. You know, it, Li Liam, you represent yeah. Insulate Britain. I look at that video and I see a mum who wants to get her kid to school on time. You want to, you know, protect the planet and make it better for her son. And yet at the same time, you want to stop him being educated. So people watch that and they go, why are you doing this? Why can't you protest in a different way to literally lying in front of cars to the point where a young mum loses it and ends up with a fine and everything else and not being able to drive a boy around? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's not a good situation. I, I spoke to Sherilyn about a month ago um, and we had a really good conversation. She's still got misgivings about the tactics that insulate Britain were using back then but she also said to me that she didn't realize how bad this climate crisis was for her 11 year old son and that's a similar position to me like I'm an electrician Piers right I'm just a, a normal bloke in 2018 I see the front page of the paper and there was a hundred academics including the Archbishop of Canterbury who said that it was morally justifiable to get arrested because of how bad this climate crisis was and they blocked bridges and Commentators like yourself were very unhappy that people were blocking bridges, but that highlighted to me how bad this crisis is. And I still stand by the, the justification for the fact that public disruption is necessary because we're looking at the absolute collapse of right, uh, civilization. Okay, here's, here's my problem with it. I actually have a lot of sympathy with the cause that you're fighting. Right? I don't disagree with you about the threat from climate change or global warming. Right? But what I disagree with you are about the tactics, because yeah. in Chile, Britain, you know, you've had a case where a man was trying to drive his mother to hospital when she suffered a stroke. You know, and he believes, the son, that if you'd actually, if you'd got her to the hospital earlier, she would have recovered. As a result, she's been left paralysed. You had insulate Britain protests causing an ambulance to be delayed by nearly an hour on another occasion with a chest pain emergency. Another unnamed paramedic told a Metro newspaper that Insulate Britain were causing ambulances to be called in tailbacks created by the road-blocking protests. 
when I read stories like this, I, you know, my blood boils. I'm like, what, what right have you got under the cause of global warming and climate change, which you want to protect young people in particular from a future which we don't know that is going to be safe for them, to do this kind of thing where you imperil people's lives or to stop a child having an education? or now being able to get around, or an old mum being able to be driven around shopping. I don't think you have the right to play God like that with people's lives. Yeah. And, and, and I don't believe that this is a cause. What well, we're it talking, is a cause. It no, is a cause. No, 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 what we're talking about is a physical reality. Yeah, but it's also a cause. You're fighting a cause and there's you're protesting. The real, there's the real People world. People protest about all sorts of things. There's the real world, Piers, right? Yeah. And, and we need to understand that we're living in the real world. I understand that. What, I, need... don't, what I don't understand, Liam, is why you have to do the kind of things I've just read out. Because... Why you have to make that poor woman not be able to take her son to school. There are other ways to protest. But why is that poor son, in 20 years' time going to live in a world that's one of unimaginable horror? Well, we don't know where the we world do. will be in 20 years' we time. We do, and, well, this actually, is, no, we, and we need to start to accept no. this horrendous physical yep. reality that exists, Piers, and we're not discussing it well enough. And Sherilyn's son is 11 years old, doesn't get to have a say mm. in his future, which, at the current trajectory, is going to be one of unimaginable yeah, I come horror. Back, Liam, I come back to the point. I agree with you about the need to take climate change seriously. What I don't agree with you is stopping people from getting emergency medical treatment or stopping children going to school. That, to me, seems to be the opposite of what you're trying to achieve, which is a safer future for people. Yes, yeah, so what we're saying here is why aren't we talking about the government criminality that's going on when every person knows like this is happening now we've got an absolutely catastrophic heat wave going on in india and pakistan at mm. the moment to the point where glaciers are melting in the himalayas causing rivers to flood and breaking yeah, infrastructure but you're missing my point i don't disagree with you about yeah. the dangers that are being faced to the world i i would support you the problem i have with your tactics is you put me off supporting you you don't bring me to your protest. I don't think, oh, I want to join these guys. They're making a great point. I just look at this poor woman and think, why have you done that to her and her kid? I look at these terrible stories of a woman left paralysed because you lot were lying in front of a car. It's like, why do that? There are other ways to protest. Because you're not listening to what I've just said. You're not emotionally no, connecting to the fact that what I've just said to you is one billion Actually, people... Actually, you're not listening to what I'm saying. No, I am, but what you're I'm not. saying is we're in this Because what awful... you're not hearing is, I'm agreeing with your cause, with yeah. the campaign but you're I've waging. Just said to you, I don't agree with the tactics. I, I want you to concede, Liam. But I don't agree with I government want, criminality. Let me finish. I want you to concede that the tactics you've been using are self-defeating. Mm. I think there's a better, more effective way to do it. I think you would, if you're honest with yourself, say that actually this doesn't work, this kind of thing. It might get you a few lurid headlines, but I don't see any of the British public go, you know what, I'm watching this video... I've got to join that protest. They well, think the opposite. Yeah, they I'm, think you're a bunch of people wrecking people's lives. And I don't think that's actually what you want to achieve. Well, look, we're prepared to take the consequences. There's 14 people currently in prison. Non-violent, ordinary people that are currently in prison. Ordinary people like Sherilyn Speed are, are receiving unfair sentences. Nobody wins here. But what we're saying is for the government... Look, we've got an, we had an ordinary... Like, a, a no-brainer plan to insulate Britain, which has been proven in an energy crisis now. I've got an energy bill of £550 that I'm really struggling to pay. I'm sure Sherilyn... But do you I'm insulate... Sure I mean, you, of... you famously walked off Good Morning Britain and you were in good company, all the best people do. Yeah. But you walked off Good Morning Britain when they asked you if you insulate your own home and you mm. said you don't because you're a hypocrite. Have you started to insulate it yet? I've just said to you I've got a £550 bill that I can't pay. Right, so just... Just to be clear, though, you still don't insulate your own home, even though your whole campaign has got to start doing that. So we're talking about social housing. I understand. The poorest in our society. I understand. We're saying that it won't happen mm. unless the poorest in our society can, can do the job. Mm. And as we all know, the poorest in our society are struggling in poverty. You see, but, I, but Lynn, I would take you more seriously if you did insulate your own home. So are you only You're saying that... You're an you know how to insulate a home, right? But and for the last 18 months, I've been doing a job that doesn't pay well, Piers, mm. right? So so I'm not a very well-off guy. Right. And what you're saying is that only people that can afford £10,000 to insulate and retrofit a property... No, I'm not saying that. I'm just ..are the that... ones that can have no, an I'm opinion just... on this. And we're talking about... No, I'm about... not saying that. I'm, just saying, I'm saying it would probably help your cause if you stop lying down in front of mums trying to take their kids to school or people whose, whose mothers are literally having strokes and getting paralysed. If you stop doing that and you actually practise what you preach about things like insulation, people might be more inclined to follow your campaign, which, by the way, just to finish on, 
I agree with. We can That's come it. together. We can come well, together come as together. a country. Let me ask Charlie before we, we can go. get on with the job. Let me just ask Charlie before we go. Final question. Do you have any sympathy with what he's doing? Sharon, can you Sorry? hear me? Do you have any sympathy with Liam? Yeah, I can hear you now. Do you have any sympathy with Liam? Sympathy with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I just... <laughs> Look, I've spoke to Liam. I've said to him before, I don't agree with the methods. I think we're stronger together. Um, I think that communication is key. I think that if we talk to people, you know, if they come and speak, come to our communities and speak to us, you know, maybe they would get more of us on their side instead of pissing us off and holding our cars and stuff I agree. like that. I, I agree. Your I, is everything. I, agree. Your, I think we're yeah, reaching a little look, point of potential consensus here, all right? Liam, you're on to the right <laughs> idea. You're executing it, in my view, in a self-harming way. But we'll continue the debate, OK? I promise you that. We'll continue the debate. Good to talk to you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uncensored next, the Queen's ill health means she won't attend the state opening of Parliament for the first time in 59 years. What does that mean for her? And what does it mean for the future of the monarchy? We'll debate that next.